If board games float your goat, join us at the table, because tonight we're rolling with the beard. We're reviewing Mountain Goats. Nah! Here we have a four player game of Mountain Goats in progress. During their turn, players will take the dice, they'll roll them, and they can choose what groupings they want to put their dice in to advance their goats along these mountains. So here I could have a five and advance my white goat on the five, and here I have a ten, so I can maybe advance my goat on the ten track. But when you're already at the top and you can normally advance your goat, you get to take one of these point tokens. And actually, once you get a point token from each mountain, then you can take one of these bonus tiles. And if you notice, they uh, get less in value. So early on, you'll get 15 points as to where the last goat to get to the top of the mountain will only get six bonus points. But in this example here, I could have chose to maybe move my white goat one, two, three times along the five track. And then I mentioned when you get to the top and there's a goat there already, you get to kick that goat out and they go all the way down to the end and you still get to take that point token. And play will continue going around the table with players rolling the dice and moving their goats up the mountains until three of these piles here are gone or all four of these bonus tiles are gone. Ah. Oh, mountain goats has a lot going for it, it really does. It's easy to teach, it's a small box, which is kind of a good thing and a bad thing because the pieces barely fit in the box. Um, speaking of box though, this is kind of a negative. The back of the box claims that it plays five players, but then you open the box to find that it only plays four players and to get that fifth player option, you have to buy an expansion. And to my knowledge, you can only get that expansion through a bundle of expansions that is sold by BoardGameTables.com, which I feel is a very odd choice and strange move that I've never seen before in board gaming. But these pieces that you're trying to stuff inside this little box are quite cute. The uh, little goat meeples are fantastic. They're made nice. The cards are fine, although they do take up a ton of table space. This is a small filler game, and I'm not really sure why they decided to make these cards so big that it takes up like a huge area which I kind of find troublesome because you start with this little tiny box which is fine and then it turns into this big table consuming thing because it seems and feels like it should be a game that you could take uh, to work in your backpack or to coffee with friends yet I don't see this game fitting on many of those small tables and can be a great inconvenience and it seems like this game could be like a push your luck game. Maybe you'll get to reroll the dice or something losing one each time, but they decided against that. So it's not really a push your luck game at all, but it's more of an area control game, which is kind of interesting because going into it, I didn't really expect that looking at the game uh, prior to knowing all the rules, uh, and which is great because there's not a whole lot of rules, so it's easy to teach. Uh, and just about anyone can learn it. But overall, I feel that this is a solid game. I don't regret purchasing it. I played it at Origins this year and immediately fell in love with it, uh, or at least I fell in love with the tiny little goat meeples that are prone to falling over, but eventually you just stop carrying and you just lay them down. But it is a good game. And with the right group, this game can actually get kind of mean with some table talk talking about like, hey, you know, uh, that orange goat there has been on top of Mount 7 uh, for quite some time. Get him out of there. He just keeps rolling these sevens, racking up points. So there are strategies and there are decisions to be made. Uh, overall, it is a very solid game design and it's about 15 bucks street price. So I really don't see how you can go wrong with that. Um, do you have to own this game? I'm going to say no, but I have room in my collection for it and it will hit the table and I enjoy it. So the beard gives it a thumbs up and I would say it's definitely worth checking out. And if you can catch it on the cheap for 10, 15 bucks, definitely pick it up and you won't regret it. And if you found this video entertaining or informative at all, please consider clicking that notification bell and subscribing to the channel. And again, thanks for watching another episode of Rowing with the Beard.